So you've watched dozens of videos about optimizing your scenes but your animation still wouldn't even start rendering? If that's the case, you're at the right place because in this video, I'll be sharing my top 3 ways to render huge scenes in Blender for absolutely free of cost. And the cool part is that it doesn't matter how crappy your PC is, you can still manage to render your favorite scene out. Now with that said, let's get into the video. Method 1 Render layers. A lot of people overlook how powerful render layers can be, including me. But after my most recent animation, I really understood the importance of them for rendering as well as for how handy they can be in the compositing stage. If you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, think of them as separate renders of parts of your scene, which you can later overlay on top of one another to get the same result as rendering the whole scene at once. For example, I rendered my last animation using render layers as well. I separated the ground part, the main character, the houses, the background elements, and the extra background characters and the foreground character. This reduced the load on my computer by a lot and actually made rendering this animation possible. Otherwise, if I just tried to render the whole thing at once, my PC would just run out of memory and in the worst case scenario, it would just crash. Now this is where your render layers will appear on the Blender UI. By default, it'll just say view layer. But if you click on this icon next to it and choose one of the three options depending on your preference, it'll add a new view layer. Now you can disable the collections that you don't want to include in this render layer and enable the ones that you do. Sometimes you might have models which are both in the foreground and in the background with something else sandwiched in between them that you want to render in a separate layer. And in that case, you just want to keep the collection turned on and then go over here to the filter icon and then turn these two on. For the effect that we want in this case, we need to turn this holdout option on. After you do that, if anything in this collection obstructs some other object whose visibility is turned on, that obstructed part will become transparent in the render. This other option right here is when you only want to calculate the indirect lighting of the object but not the object itself. So let's say in this ground render layer, I want to have the shadow of the character still appear properly but not the character itself. In that case, I can just turn on this indirect lighting option and it will only calculate the light bounce of the character on other objects that are turned on and disable the direct lighting that goes into the camera. After you're done setting your layers up, you can go to the view layer properties and turn this render single layer option on. This means that when you hit render, only the render layer that you currently have selected will be rendered and the rest of them will be ignored unless you have set up the compositor tab to include more than one. This can be done by creating multiple render layers nodes each set to a different view layer and then multiple file output nodes with different output names or directories. This technique is commonly used so it's it's important that you try it out and make use of it if you haven't already. Now if you're a beginner and you're just getting started in Blender, I know that all of this can be a bit overwhelming, which is why the sponsor of this video is Skillshare. If you don't already know, Skillshare is an online learning platform which offers thousands of classes on a wide variety of topics ranging from freelance and entrepreneurship to videography, animation and fine art just to name a few. Now I've used Skillshare myself and I'd highly recommend that you check out this tutorial by Remington Markham aka our dear Southern Shoddy about creating your first 3D character in Blender. I've watched this tutorial myself and even I learned a lot of stuff from it and I think it's incredibly well made, especially for beginners who might feel intimidated to take on a challenging project. It goes over everything from the basics of the user interface, moving on to the character design, modeling, texturing, lighting and rendering. It'll get you started with a proper professional workflow which in my opinion is very important when you're starting out as you need to build the right habits from the beginning. They also have a tutorial on bringing illustrations to life with Blender and I think this one it will be particularly useful for my sister who is a 2D artist and has been meaning to use Blender's 3D capabilities to make her artworks even better. The great thing about Skillshare is that it has classes to fit your schedule and your current skill level. You can also join live classes to connect with the teachers and also get feedback on your work from the community and also get inspiration. Also I have a special link for you guys in the description and the comment section. So the first 1000 people to join from the given link will get a free one month trial of Skillshare premium membership. So so this is a great opportunity to start learning that skill you've always wanted to learn. Method number two. Sheep at render farm. Now if your PC is just absolute garbage, the second option you'd have is to just use a render farm. And I want to make this video accessible to everyone so I'll only be talking about the free stuff here. So if you don't know already, render farms are basically just multiple interconnected computers that can be used to render a single animation. And there are a lot of render farms out there which you can choose from. I've personally only tried concierge render and sheep it. Concierge render is paid which means that you have to buy credits using actual money whereas sheep it is totally free. The way you can get credits or 
your points in Sheepit is by actually rendering for someone else first. There's a certain threshold of points that you need to accumulate and 10 frames that you need to render for someone else before you can render your stuff. I suggest just running the render overnight and by the time you wake up, you'll have enough to render your own animation. Of course, this method isn't going to work if you need something super urgently. And in that case, you just have to rely on a paid render farm. I've also realized that your projects need to be less than 500 megabytes in order to use this platform because, you know, if it is anything above that, it'll have reduced accessibility to users as not everybody can work with something that large. So they put this limit on it. Apparently, my project was around 2.5 gigabytes, so I couldn't use Sheepit for this one. Method number three. Google Colab. This method is a little bit jankier than the other two because you need to run some code to get it up and running. Basically, it's a cloud computing service that lets you run Python scripts in your browser. It gives you free access to GPUs and hence you can also set it up to render your Blender projects with it. I guess in a way that's kind of exploiting it, but I've seen a lot of people do this without any problems, so I guess it's fine. Now, instead of showing you how to set it up in this video, you should just check out this awesome video by Damien Matthew, a fellow Blender creator. I followed this video step by step to set up my notebook as they call it here and it seemed to work fine. Just that my project was a bit too much to handle for the GPUs that they use here but it really was worth the shot. So those were the three ways you can render your scenes in Blender for free. I didn't go over any optimization tricks because there are plenty of other videos that go over that. But if these still didn't work then I have some tips that could help optimize your scenes so think of these as some bonus methods. Firstly if your scene has a massive poly count which could be anything from 3 million to 20 million based on your PC you should try to figure out out what assets will actually need that much of detail and which ones won't. So let's say you have a lot of background assets with a lot of details, you can try deleting some of the minor details or remove any subsurface modifiers that you might have on them. If they are models that you can't edit very easily such as high poly sculpts or 3D scans, you can drop in a decimate modifier on them to reduce their poly count by a lot. Now if that's not an issue with your scene, you might also have a lot of high resolution textures which increases the texture streaming load on your hardware. So if you have a bunch of 4K textures on random objects it would definitely help to just use 2k or even 1k textures instead depending on how far the objects are from the camera or how big or small they are you could also have multiple objects use the same material and make that material use a 4k or sometimes even an 8k texture this is called a texture atlas this is a common technique used in games to reduce the texture streaming processes as it is easier to load in one larger image than multiple smaller images at once there are also ways in which you can make cycles work faster by adjusting some settings and you can find multiple YouTube videos videos on this topic by some great creators that I follow myself. I'd also suggest that you try out Cycles X if you haven't already. It is still in the alpha state and doesn't support volumetrics during the time when I'm recording this video, but the developers will hopefully figure that out soon. It's a massive boost in terms of speed, especially when you consider animations as with a few seconds shed off the render time for each frame, it can go a long way when it just adds up. So yeah, that's everything that I wanted to share in this video. There are a lot many topics which I may or may not know about which I didn't cover in this video so if you happen to know any feel free to share them with everyone in the comment section and let's all help each other out i hope you learned something from this video and enjoyed watching it make sure to drop a like and share with your friends who you think would benefit from the things that i talked about in this video also if you'd like to see more of the future videos just like this one be sure to subscribe and hit that notification button otherwise the subscribe button is practically useless oh and if you have anything that you'd want to see a separate video on be sure to let me know in the comments down below as i read every one of them i want to include some more shameless plugs here mainly about my patreon page where you can get access to behind the scenes content sneak peeks early access to videos such as these heavy discount on products and even exclusive tutorials we also have a renderized discord server where we're planning to host some more events soon so be sure to join as soon as possible so that you can participate in them and yeah with all of that said thanks for watching this video and i'll see you guys in the next one